So after almost two months of preparation, let's finally start our first and major example for medical imaging. And that's uh, the radon transform. I've already motivated why that is uh, important. And uh, I want to now give you a little bit more exact mathematical definition. So uh, let f any function from Rn to R. And then we need to define the radon transform of that function evaluated at uh, some theta and s, where theta is in the n minus 1 dimensional unit circle and uh, s is a real number. And we define this as the integral over the hyperplane that satisfies n, n minus 1 dimensional hyperplane that satisfies x times theta is s, f of x d sigma of x. And uh, sigma is the n minus 1 dimensional induced measure on that hyperplane. Okay, um, for which kind of functions do we actually define this? Um, I think I already said that S would be a great choice. Yes, it is. So uh, choosing everything in S is fine. Uh, also a great choice is C naught infinity. But uh, observe that these two do not really have too much to do with the real, uh, with reality, because um, in reality you will assume that there are images where that have jumps, that have discontinuities, where uh, two organs just meet each other. And uh, so probably that's not very realistic, but uh, in fact, we'll um, prove some theorems only for this very restricted function space, but use it in a wider function space a little, uh, later. So piecewise constant would be fine as well, but that would uh, Mir even mirror the uh, reality better than uh, the continuous functions. Okay, um, now let's look at uh, two specific examples um, for n equals 2. Uh, the n minus 1 dimensional hyperplane is just a line. So for n equals 2, uh, the radon transform measures line integrals, and in fact, it measures all line integrals. So for all thetas on the unit circle, it computes the, um, the integral over s, uh, s times theta plus t times theta perp, where t is in the integral. Uh, so for fixed s and varying t. And uh, I will always use the parametrization that theta of phi is cosine phi sine phi. I think I already used that uh, in the last lecture. And uh, hopefully I'm doing this right. Um, I think theta perp uh, of phi are usually defined as minus sine phi cosine of phi. You could also do it the other way around, right? So, um, but it's usually used only in one way. Um, we'll see which is the correct one. Okay, uh, now what if n equals 3, then the n minus 1 dimensional hyperplane is a plane integral. And uh, according to our motivation, um, the uh, uh, a tomograph will not be able to measure plane integrals. And uh, so uh, uh, you already assume that for n equals 3, the radon transform is not useful, at least, at least not useful for our application of tomography, and we'll have to do something else, and we will. Um, so the correct definition is the following. Uh, let C, the uh, cylinder in, R, uh, in Rn, plus 1. <laughs> Uh, that um, is um, the that is S n minus one uh, cross product with cross product with R, and uh, take n equals two here, so that's S one, so that's the unit circle, and now uh, multiplying that with R gives an infinite cylinder, so that's where this name comes from, and of course all the theta and S that we have are uh, then. Um, in this cylinder in that way. Okay, uh, R is a function that maps a function of Rn from some 
function space, and uh, I'm denoting this with x over here, to some function space on that cylinder. And uh, it is called the radon transform. If Rf of theta and s is integral over x times uh, theta is s, f of x d sigma of x. Usually people get so very, very soon get tired of, all, of always writing this d sigma of x. So um, I will always leave the sigma away following the standard li literature and simply write this as uh, integral over x times theta is s f of x dx. But uh, keep in mind that the dx over here is actually the n minus one dimensional measure. Uh, because if, if this was the n dimensional method measure, then uh, uh, the hyperplane would be a set of, dim uh, of measure zero. And uh, so this would be zero all the time. So it's the n minus one dimensional method measure. Okay, uh, so what does this actually do? Well, it uh, integrates over an n minus one dimensional hyperplane that goes through s times theta. And um, the whole hyperplane is perpendicular to theta. So uh, this is the same as uh, y times theta equals zero. So that's the uh, perpendicular set to theta. Um, f of s times theta plus y dy. Now, this is quite okay. The next one will look a little bit fishy. We like to write this in the following way. Integral over rn, f of x delta of x times theta mean minus s dx. And yes, that's the one dimensional delta, which cannot be represented as a function that I introduced uh, last uh, in the last lecture. Um, but I also already showed you that this has this representation has some merit, uh, more or less. This is really um, um, just uh, indicating the distribution that is defined by delta. Now, let me um, show you what the sense of that delta distribution over here is. Um, I take this formula over here. So integral over y times theta is 0, f of s uh, times theta plus y dy. Well, that's uh, the same as um, I add a t times theta over here and multiply that with the delta distribution. Now, evaluating this over here uh, will just evaluate the uh, the uh, integrating the integrand at t equals zero, and so the two over here are exactly the same. Okay, uh, so if that's the same. Um, uh, y plus t times theta now goes through all of Rn. So what I could do is I could set x equal to y plus t times theta. So now this becomes an integral over Rn, f of s times theta plus x. And uh, if x is y plus t times theta, then t is x times theta. So I um, substitute t by x times theta, dx. And uh, now um, substituting x plus uh, uh, x plus s times theta by x, um, we arrive f as um, on, we arrive at the integral f of x delta of x times theta minus s dx. Now you could ask, well, where's the? Why does that make? It does make sense, maybe, but uh, where's the advantage? Uh, and uh, in fact, there's a big advantage with that. And uh, the thing is. Um, with this dx over here, or this dy over here, there were these, it was more or less written in parentheses. And um, because that's not the n dimensional measure, it's the n minus one dimensional measure. And we have to take that into account. So um, computing and doing sub substitutions isn't that easy. But it is here because at this point, dx and even also over already here, the dx over here, um, that's the n my that's the n dimensional measure, and substituting with, with respect to the n dimensional measure is much simpler. So uh, that's why we're writing it in uh, this way, and um, either in the exercises or on the handout that I will give to you on Monday, uh, you will see why that is very very important and very very useful. Okay, I already said that uh, in three dimensions and higher dimensions, uh, the um, 
the um, radon transform doesn't make too much sense when you model the want to model uh, the computerized tomography. So we need to add something else. And um, of course, we want to stick, we want to stay with line integrals. So uh, when we're in Rn, uh, we somehow have to parameterize all lines in Rn. And we do this in the following way. We write them as x plus t times theta, so one point on the line plus t times theta, where theta is now the direction of the line. And that makes sense for theta in Sn minus one, because we need to have direction. And well, actually any x, it wouldn't make sense for any x, but uh, that would mean that uh, many x, many lines would have, um, a, a fixed line would have uh, very many representations. And uh, we always take x as the projection of the origin onto the line. So that means that x times theta would, should be zero. So uh, this is only defined if theta is in Sn minus one and x times theta is zero. And uh, well, that space we call C prime. And that's, a, it's not a cylinder, but uh, it's a replacement of our cylinder from above. This one is called the Röntgen transform or the X-ray transform. And uh, well, it simply says integrate over the line in direction theta, theta through X. Um, for 2D, we would expect that this is more or less the same as the radon transform because then both parametrize all lines. So uh, you easily find that RF of theta and S is PF of theta perp, perp and S times theta, where theta and theta perp are um, selected according uh, to my rule uh, that I had above. Okay, where theta perp is chosen according to that. Okay, so that means that uh, up to reparametrization, re uh, RF and PF are the same in two dimensions, and that's uh, what we would have expected. Um, we will always use uh, the radon transform, and uh, we will always use it in two dimensions. Um, if we go to three dimensions at some point, we will have to think of something else, and we will. But um, at this point, we stay with n equals two and do the parametrization using the radon transform. Um, yeah, I should mention that there's always, uh, for all the theorems we will prove, there's equivalent theorems for the, radon, for the Röntgen transform or the X-ray transform. But um, even the proofs are usually the same. So uh, very often we will not provide them or I will just mention them. Okay, some uh, additional remarks. Um, we have that RF of theta and S, that's uh, defined as the integral over x times theta is s, f of x dx. Now I can replace theta by minus theta, minus theta and s by minus s, then nothing changes. Uh, and uh, that's the radon transform of minus theta and minus s. Okay, so um, if we measure our f of theta and s for all theta and all s, then we're doing much too far, much, <laughs> we're doing too much work, work because we uh, measure um, all the lines twice from one side and then again from the other side, but hopefully the integral is the same. So uh, we restrict ourselves of measuring only for theta in half of Sn minus one. And uh, since we're in R2, uh, what we do is we measure for t theta of phi for phi in zero to pi, or I will also follow often follow the industry standard here and uh, just represent everything in degrees. So from zero to 180 degrees. Okay, um, another note, um, I will usually assume that uh, the support of F is in K1 of zero. And uh, that means that if we have a line uh, that's further away from the origin than one, uh, then of course the integral uh, over that over the function over that line of the function is zero. 
And uh, that means that RF of theta and S is zero for absolute value of S larger than one. Next, um, of course, um, I'm working with, uh, in the analytical, um, in the um, analytical theorems, I'll be working with RF of theta and S for theta, some uh, continuous variable in um, zero to pi and uh, S in minus one to one, also continuous. But um, it's quite clear that uh, when we are facing uh, the true measurements, then uh, this will only be available for discrete values. And um, let me already define this at this point because I want to show you some examples where that is in fact used. So uh, we assume that uh, theta, uh, RF of theta and S is only available for some specific angle theta of phi k and also for some distances SL. Usually we will assume that uh, we have P views, so P values of, uh, uh, of phi k equally distributed in zero to pi. So we have phi k equal to k times pi over p for k from zero to pi, pi, uh, to p minus one. And we have SL equals to L times H, H equal to one over Q is the detector spacing and uh, that L ranges from minus Q to Q. So S then covers uh, an interval from minus one to one. Okay, so now let's make clear what the radon transform actually does. And um, the simplest example you can think of, this is uh, the unit square of minus one, one squared. Now maybe I should enlarge this a little bit. I hope you can see this. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a circle around zero with a radius one half. And we want to compute uh, the, um, the rayon transform of the characteristic function of that circle. Now, um, from what I mentioned, it's already clear. Uh, um, um, we have the radon transform available only for some specific angles. So let's start with the angle theta equal, uh, phi equals zero. So that means theta is a horizontal vector in this direction. So theta is horizontal. And uh, that means that uh, the lines are already, are all um, lines in direction theta perp. So they all look, oops. They, these are the lines we are, um, inter we are integrating on. Um, the, the vertical lines we are, uh, are the lines that we are using for integration. And uh, of course, we're not using all the lines. We cannot measure all the lines in that direction, but there is some spacing between this and that's the detector spacing that I just mentioned. So uh, the value of that integral is, uh, uh, is available only for some values of SL, uh, of, for some values SL, and they go from minus one to one. Okay, good. Now, um, what uh, what will be measured uh, then by the radon transform? Well, the, uh, the these are vertical integrals over here. So when we uh, when the um, uh, when the line has a distance of, uh, from the origin that's larger than one half, of course the integral is zero because the characteristic function is zero there. And then for um, Starting at uh, s equals to minus one half, when you go from here, now here's the minus one half. Um, starting at minus, starting at minus one half, we get a positive integral, and you easily find that it's twice the square root of one minus s squared. 
Um, and uh, it has the maximum value over here. There the value should be one. The integral should be one because characteristic function is one on the interval from minus one half to one half. So uh, it should be one here and then it should go down to zero again. So it will look exactly li like this. And it, in fact, that's the function two times square root of, did I say one? Uh, 0 0.5 squared minus S squared. And twice, yeah. Okay, um, so this is the function. So these are the values that are measured. Um, this is the value that's measured, and here's the s going from minus one to one. Okay, uh, so in our discrete setting, what we're getting is a measurement ve vector in R2q plus one indexed by minus q to q. And uh, yeah, this is one measurement vector. Okay, so uh, now let's change the phi. So now uh, let's go to a, to a different uh, unit vector. And uh, so we turn everything a little bit around. Now this is theta. The, uh, we're measuring along the perpendicular lines. So that uh, these are the lines we're measuring on. And of course, again, we're not uh, measuring all of them, but only some discrete ones, exactly 2q plus 1 discrete ones. And um, yeah, these are the values that I that I get over here. And of course, it doesn't change anything because the circle is rotationally symmetric. So if I um, uh, if I turn the um, uh, the the whole thing around, if I change theta then uh, it doesn't make a difference with respect to the circle. So uh, what is measured is exactly the same as before. Now, if we do this, that for all the angles from theta zero to theta pi minus p uh, to um, from phi zero to uh, phi pi minus one, we get p measurement vectors, each with a length of r to the 2k, 2q plus one. Now one would feel tempted to put that into a matrix and that's exactly what we do. So we have a we take a matrix of um, size, oops, of size, no, no. We take a matrix of size R, to the p times 2q, uh, 2q plus 1. Uh, what, what is the, uh, the number of uh, rows is 2q plus 1. Number of columns is p. And uh, then I stack them all over here, right? So the, this is, uh, so, um, so this is the measurement vector M0, M1, and that goes up to MP minus one. So this way I get a matrix uh, and um, I can interpret that matrix as an image um, by simply replacing each value with a certain color. And uh, so that's what I will always do in this lecture. I will represent the data that I get from the radon transform as an image. So um, uh, maybe I can make this a little bit larger. Yeah, and the outcome is something like this over here. So um, I had values from zero to one. I um, map these values to colors from blue to yellow. So uh, blue stands for zero, yellow stands for one. And over here we have again blue and everything else is in between. And um, how should we interpret this? Well, for phi equals zero, which is the first column over here, we have that uh, the function is zero first then it goes to one, back to zero, and then zero again. So uh, in the column, we find exactly the measurement vector that we had above. Okay, uh, make sure that you understand what the interpretation of that is. And um, 
because I will use always use it to illustrate what I'm doing. Okay, now uh, the circle is maximally <laughs> uninteresting for the radon transform, at least when it's located at the origin, um, because uh, if we just turn everything around, then it doesn't change. So um, um, changing the phi, it doesn't do anything and it's just constant with phi. Okay, so uh, that's a simple example, but uh, but it doesn't make any sense. Okay, the next thing. Um, let's move the circle around a little bit. And now uh, think what's happening um, when we have the circle a little bit to the right and now change the uh, now change the direction we're viewing of the uh, when we're now changing changing theta excuse me um then the circle will kind of move around and uh, you see what what happens is that uh, we still have exactly the same sh uh, shape as before the same pattern as before so it's still something like square root of 0 0.5 squared minus s squared but now it's moving around it's moving the center around a little bit so so it's shifted over here right okay and uh, obviously that shift is a sine wave uh, looks um, it looks like a wave and um, if I do uh, um, if I do something that I usually do not do uh, and measure not from 0 to 180 degrees but from 0 to 360 degrees then uh, you will see what happens then that shape will be moved around uh, like a sine wave so uh, in a sine wave, and you can easily prove that uh, this is true. So it gets a sine wave or cosine or whatever. Okay, since um, that means that uh, many um, data functions, data images that uh, we will be looking at very much look like signs. And um, that's the reasons, reason why in the engineering world, usually that um, that image or the data that we have is also called the sinogram of the data. Okay, so we didn't do any processing yet, right? I mean, this is more or less right what comes out of the radon trans or of the uh, tomograph with the exception that we've taken the logarithm. And so that's what I started. Okay, um, so I hope you now have a general idea of what the data looks like and how to interpret these data. Now we need some reasonable objects. Yeah. Don't fear, it'll come back here. Yeah. Okay. So, excuse me. So you have some time. Okay, we need some reasonable objects that we can test algorithms on. And uh, one such object, uh, some characteristic function obviously is uh, not, not very interesting. So um, Shep and Logan uh, were two, well, Shep I think was an engineer, uh, uh, excuse me, Logan was an engineer, Shep was a statistician. And uh, they defined uh, a standard phantom that we'll always be looking at for uh, when we when we testing uh, when we test our algorithms. And uh, it is it consists more or less of characteristic characteristic functions of several ellipses. So you know why I asked you to compute the radon transform of a characteristic function and. Uh, I have actually implemented that and uh, you will get the implementation on Monday. And uh, you see, okay, the modified Chep Logan Phantom looks something like this. And the idea behind that is they wanted to have something that models the head and uh, doing an X-ray of the head is extremely difficult. And the reason simply is um, there is uh, the skull on the outside of the head. And uh, that has uh, um, a very high attenuation. So only very few radon, uh, only um, not too much um, 
of the x-rays get, actually gets inside. So that's one problem. And the other problem is um, we have a major contrast over here, but the, uh, so this is a big contrast, but this, the contrast over here is relatively small. Um, so the uh, soft tissue inside the head can, is much less visible than the outside over here, than, than the skull, which we are not at all interested in. And you can see this over here. So of course, um, outside of the, uh, of the head, there's air. So um, the attenuation is zero there. Then we have the skull, which is modeled by this over here, which has an attenuation of roughly one. And then we have some objects inside and uh, the contrast. So they, they go from, I think, 0, 0.0 to 0 0.2 or something. And uh, so these, um, the, these objects are often very hard to find. And um, when we test our algorithms, then we will look whether these small objects down here and the objects here can actually be represented. And if the large objects cause artifacts, so that's, that's what we'll be testing and uh, that's what we'll be doing. Okay. Um, now, since it's just the uh, sum of characteristic functions of several ellipses, we can use the outcome of the exercise to compute the, uh, the radon transform of this analytically. And uh, I have done this, and uh, it looks something like this. P and Q were quite small here, so that's why you see the discretization over here. But it's, it's no problem to compute uh, the radon transform analytically now for discrete for discrete values of um, phi and s um, using the formula that you derived in the exercises. Okay, um, I said this is the modified Chaplogan phantom, and um, actually this is a fraud because the uh, phantom that uh, Shep and Logan defined really model uh, the um, really model the brain so that's what really the um, the um, the relations inside the brain are like and the true value and by the way this is the one that matlab uses by default and i think also python uses that by default and it's it's really you can change that but but it's really dangerous because um, when you look at the real thing, this is the Shep Logan phantom. And then you say, okay, um, that's strange because um, all the details that are headed above are gone. Well, they're not gone. If you look very closely, you see that uh, here's that big black ellipse and the, the other one is here as well. So you can see it, but the contrast is even much smaller. And that's the real thing. The, um, the soft tissue inside the brain has very little difference in contrast. And only if I rescale the whole image to the interval from zero uh, to 0 0.1. So now yellow uh, and everything that's larger than uh, 0 0.1 is now yellow. Then you find, okay, now I can see the details and we have to rescale everything to this interval. And actually the difference, the contrast is something in the order of 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. And reconstructing this one is a much harder task than reconstructing this one over here. And uh, one of the reasons, that's not working any longer. Ah, okay. Um, the real Chap Logan data looks something like this. And uh, wait, looking at this, you have maybe had the feeling, oh, I can see some of the details over here. You can, absolutely, but you can't see it here. Other, um, so uh, the effect of noise and everything is much more difficult to counter here. So the real data, so the real Chap Logan phantom is much harder to reconstruct. So that's one thing. Okay, um, as I said, uh, I will give you my program for generating data next week. And um, uh, I hope I didn't make <laughs> too much mistakes. It took a whole lot of time, um, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Now, uh, there's one problem I didn't yet mention. 
Um, because I said I, I'm, I said we are doing computerized tomography, but I did something wrong at this point, in fact, because the way that uh, in CT data are measured, we have a fixed position of the X-ray source, or one position of the X-ray source that then uh, that then is moved around the patient. And uh, so for one fixed position, uh, we're getting the data for a fixed position of the detector, and then it's moved to the next direct uh, to the next position and so on. So that looks very much like the phi k that I had above, but um, we are for a fixed position of the detector of the of the X-ray source, we are not getting parallel rays, but they look rather something like this. So um, if the X-ray source is infinitely away from the patient, then these rays will be parallel, as we had above. But if the X-ray source is close to the object, then the data will definitely look different. And uh, this is a problem, but um, there are ways of getting around this, for example, just by reordering the data, which isn't too bad. But uh, real algorithms, um, algorithms that work on real data, really have to somehow cope with that problem. And so that's one of the reasons why I'll not be giving you real data, um, because um, you have to do that reordering. So that's it's not all that simple. And so that's why we'll always be working with artificial data that I generated myself. Maybe I'll just have you, let you have a look at uh, some of the real data. Okay, and uh, let, let me just mention the name. Uh, what we are looking at above is parallel scanning. So that's our idealized way of measuring the radon transform. And uh, what happens in practice is actually fan beam scanning for fixed positions of the X-ray source. And uh, so that's uh, maybe a different thing. And that's definitely something you have to take into account when you go to your measurements.